Hello and welcome to Jack Johnson's Flight Gear Tutorials. In this edition, the first edition, we are going to fly a seaplane. Something that is not covered by Oscar Boomans's Flight Gear Tutorials that I know of. This is the de Havilland Canada Twin Otter. You'll prefer this one for, for your first seaplane um, flights um, because it easy handles and um, it actually cruises quite quickly. It cruises at a similar speed to the Beechcraft B1900D which Oscar Boomans has several tutorials on. As you can see I have started the engines and I'll now run up the throttles to full power. If you're taking off from C, gear up. You pull your gear in. If you're taking off from land, keep your gear left out because it will allow you to roll on the runway. When you run up to 110 knots, which is on the speedometer, which says knots in the middle, and it's in the middle of 100 and 120, you can lift off. If you have no, if you have flaps on, you can lift off at a much lower speed. You now need to climb out of the seaport. If your destination is land, put your gear back down. I always fly with my gear out, even in retractable gear airplanes. You'll want to do this for your first few flights, but when you get more proficient you'll want to practice gear up flights. In this de Havilland Canada you've got your gear hanging out um, during flight. The thought of that at 140 knots is a little frightening, but um, it's unlikely that they will fall off because they are floats designed for seaplane operation. You're supposed to operate this plane like a seaplane, which is speedboat into, until you take off and, and once you've landed. You can probably see there's a bit of left turn syndrome. Add, add one rudder right, if you notice this. If you're a VFR pilot and not an IFR pilot, I would recommend you descend through the clouds if they are thicker than this. As you can see the clouds are quite thin perfect flying weather. And it just so turns that um, when you're flying seaplanes the world is your runway. Well, 70% of it. So if you need to do an emergency ditching, if you've still got a few engines you can you can speedboat um, to the nearest coast. You can say we've reached our cruising altitude of zero feet. Now when you're cruising it's time to reduce the throttles. When your wings are just above level um, it's time to reduce the throttles so that you can remain at cruising altitude and speed. I'm at a very low cruising altitude because I'm going to show you another stunt, a water landing. As you can see I went off course. We're going to descend through the clouds because you can't clearly see the runway if you will. Now you can see the altimeter thin handle is unwinding 
This is a good thing if you're trying to land. The fat handle is slowly unwinding. When it gets to the zero handle, then it means, well, it gets to the zero, then it means you're very close to land, or that you have landed in many cases. If you're landing on C, and for some crazy reason, I think I've gone off course. I think I'm, I think I'm lost. Now, if you wish to land, it's time to pull back the throttles even further, so you can descend while maintaining speed. You need to maintain an approach speed of around 120 knots. I find 80 knots a recommended touchdown speed is unstable if you don't have flaps out. Put your flaps out. Increase throttle if necessary to maintain speed during final approach. Either we're drifting or um, the sea is wavy. Um, you still need to descend until you reach the zero foot mark. For flare up, you just need to keep the wings just above level. And you need to kill the throttle when you're trying to when you're trying to land completely and you need to increase the throttle if you get close to stalling in fact go around if you need to apply takeoff power as you can see I applied takeoff power I'm now reducing power so that I can descend smoothly and I might crash but this is a stunt that I have practiced. I'm getting the flaps. I think it's all the way out already. Now the pressure altimeter is unreliable and I don't think this um, has a radio altimeter Once your wings are level for flare out, you really need to kill the throttle. If you if you nearly leave the white band backwards, um, as you can see, I'm about to land. Flare out. And I think that was water contact. I think that was water contact. So you kill the throttle on water contact and you pitch the nose all the way down if possible. There are no parking brakes so you have to just let the throttles and the speed run down. Let's see what that looked like from outside of the airplane. In flight gear you go into view Instant replay, you view model view and you drag it backwards. As you can see here, I think my gear were down on auto start. Right, when I started moving, the gear was down. I pulled them up because they were creating drag. Now, as you can see, the aircraft is banked during its takeoff roll. This is because of rough seas.
on this airplane, the de Havilland Canada, um, there are two turboprops lifting 20 passengers and I think their cargo. It is a utility plane, it's generally short takeoff and landing. And by soon, we all have left off. At the moment, we're having trouble. Let's fast forward through this. I think we're going a little faster now. Lift off. We had lift off. We're now looking at the aircraft, it is climbing. And for some reason my computer just lagged. Um, we're turning to the right for some reason, I think the propellers counter rotate so left turn syndrome is not a problem. As you can see, I climb through the clouds. Which is dangerous if you're a VFR pilot. You can probably see the skids. I think by now I've leveled out ish. I'd never know. <gasps> I'm going to change the view to chase view because it shows um, with um, bank it shows the horizon and Touchdown. After the descent, which was wobbly, this airplane is now descending. Bear in mind, if you land on the landing gear um, on water, your plane will roll forward and it will be unable to um, stay stable. <laughs> 